the world is at war. We are at war. Do not fool yourself that it's not so. Even though we're not being threatened, that our homes are safe, our children are still going to school, it's not touching us directly, but we have already been dragged into a global war. How can we prevent this? How can we stop the suffering that is happening in so many parts of the world today? What are the stakes that we're really playing for? I'd like to share with you the perspectives of the shaman, of a shaman, my perspectives, but also those of the wisdom keepers that I work with in the Andes. They call this the Pachakuti. The Pachakuti is the turning over of an era. It's the end of one time and the beginning of another. Pacha means Pachamama Earth, it means space and time, and Kuti means the new beginning or the end. Today we're at the end of a great era. The last Pachacuti that occurred in the Americas was when the Europeans invaded and they decimated the ancient societies. They destroyed the temples, they executed the, the shamans, they persecuted them, they installed thieves and criminals as governors and priests that were child molesters as bringing the word of God. Today the world is turning itself right again. And the process is not pretty. It's actually a process of birthing a new human and birthing a new planet. If you've ever attended a birth, you know that it's messy. You know there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of screaming, there's a lot of pain, and there's life at the end of the tunnel. There's a new birth that is always accompanied by these very, very dramatic, dramatic scenes. What's happening today is that humans, in particular, are going into a larval stage. We're doing what the caterpillars do. A caterpillar will turn into a larval stage, will attach itself to a leaf, will wrap itself up in a cocoon, and the cocoon will begin to get tighter and tighter and try telling a caterpillar who has never seen a butterfly that is going to develop these exquisite yellow and blue butterfly wings and be able to fly and not simply crawl on the earth anymore. They're gonna tell you you're crazy. This is what's happening today. We wanna get out of our caterpillarness is getting tighter and tighter, climate change, social inequality, economic collapse, the, uh, uh, what's happening with uh, war in different parts of the world, the abuse of the feminine by the patriarchy, the exploitation of peoples of color, the looting and pillaging of this garden that we were given by the great spirit to be the stewards of, that we have become literally the, the, the thieves and robbers and pillagers. This has come to an end today. How we adapt, how we become that new human and how we do it very rapidly while we still can is the great test that is facing humanity. Now the problem is we think that this is a collective test that all of humanity is going to face it. And I believe that it's a personal test that is going to be up to you and to me and to each one of us to take that step to become the new human that the prophecies say will emerge after this turning of the wheel, this turning of the earth that's happening right now. The shamans call this new human homo luminous not homo sapiens, not thinking man, but luminous woman and man, luminous humans, that we have our own light, our own luminosity, that we live enlightened lives in right relationship with the ecosystem and sustainable relationships with nature as protectors of the earth and not as abusers of the earth. What's happened is that the old model is collapsing around us. It's a patriarchal model. It's a model that says, yes, the earth is flat and that it's going to be flat if I continue to believe that it's flat. Well, it's not, it's round. The earth is not only round, but it, it has limited resources. It has a limited carrying capacity. It can only take so much of our garbage 
before it begins to return it to us. We are like a parasite on a great being. And like any parasite, like a flea on a dog, at a certain point, the dog will get rid of the flea. The system will eliminate the parasite. It's going to bring us into a symbiotic, reciprocal relationship with the earth, with each other, that is not based on war, on my wanting your land or your horse or your, land or your ranch or your spouse, but on a reciprocal, respectful, sacred relationship with each other. We're creating that, and we need to create it individually within our lives first. The second thing I'd like to share with you is the power that we have to bring peace to the planet. You might be wondering, how can I bring peace to the earth when I can barely bring peace to my own life and much less to my own mind that's running like a, like a speeding bullet train? Well, we have to begin there. I invite you to do a ceremony with me today, a fire ceremony, which is the shaman's lineage that I belong to and, and that we train our students in. There are shamans of, that follow the ways of water. These are the, the healers, the ways of earth. They work the land and the ways of wind. They're the storytellers. The way of fire is a way of rapid transformation. And the power of ceremony is that we can interact with each other in the quantum field, in the invisible world. Just like physics says that you can have entanglement, two particles can be entangled with each other at the opposite ends of the universe, and change happens simultaneously. You shift one and the other one shifts. The same thing, we can do the same thing to bring peace in the planet. But we only can do that within the safety and the power of ceremony. By stepping outside of ordinary time and space, by stepping outside the shell of the physical body and into our luminosity, at that point, we can interact directly with the field. And the prayers and the intention that we place in the fire become so, they become so. We co-create peace with spirit and it manifests in the world, wherever there's strife. I remember one time being in the high Andes with my shaman mentor. And we came to a village where it had not rained in many, many months. And they said to him, please call the rains for us. And he went into a hut and meditated for three days, fasted. And when he came back out, I was at the edge of the village, sitting on a stone, looking down at the Amazon 3,000 feet below me. And I asked him, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to pray rain. And I said to him, you mean you're going to pray for rain? He said, no, I'm going to pray rain and he returned an hour and a half later and by the end of the day dark clouds had gathered over the mountains and the rains broke out and i asked him how did you do it and he said well i prayed rain i wasn't praying to anyone or for anything but i prayed rain there's no separation any longer between you and spirit you are the hand and the instrument of the divine. And if you can assume that, it becomes operational. And then you pray rain, and rain happens. You pray healing, and healing happens without you needing to be the doer, because you disappear. Like Rumi says to the beloved, he says, for I have ceased to exist. Only you are here, God. Only you are here. We vanish and the rains come. We bring intentionality into the field because that's the only thing that can operate in the field. The will, will cannot operate inside the quantum field, but intentionality organizes reality for it to manifest and the rains come and peace appears. I invite you to join me to get a, light a candle, to find a small stick, it can be a toothpick or a small stick that is called the death arrow, where we blow into it our intention. In this case, it's the intention for peace. And I'd like you to recall 
moments of where you have experienced deep peace in your life, contentment where everything was exactly the way it should be. And below that peace, that it may come to all those in need and places where there's suffering, where there's war. Blow that into that stake and that becomes your offering to the fire. That as we find that peace within us, we offer it to the field, that it reorganize the field and bring it up in quality to find peace and beauty and to bring peace and beauty where it's needed. And then we bring that to the fire. And we release to the fire all of the war that lives within us. All of the judgment that lives within us. All of the suffering and the pain that lives within each one of us. releasing it to the fire. And next I invite you to take the fire and pass your hands through the fire. And take that love and that energy and that light of peace and bring it into your own heart center. Into your heart center Residing, inhabiting fully that heart space that is yours. <clears throat> and now to bring this peace and this beauty and love to the field, that it may find its way wherever healing is needed, wherever love or peace is needed. And in doing this, we actually inform the field. We give instructions to creation. And we're acting as an instrument and as one with the divine, with the great spirit. And it becomes so. Let it be so. And it is. Do not underestimate the power of ceremony when you're able to enter the field consciously and operate there. I invite you to do this fire ceremony whenever you feel a need, whenever you feel strife in your life, whenever you read the news and you're afflicted by the suffering that you see in the news, replace that with love and with the intention that peace prevail and it shall become so. Thank you for joining me in this meditation and these times when our presence as medicine men and women is so important. Yes, let's step up, let's step in, let's show up and become the solution. Aho.